Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Welcome back to the vlog. This is a different version of today's vlog, and we are actually on the golf course, as you can probably tell. But basically, I'm on the first tee right now, just at the first drive, waiting for my friends to shoot, and uh, I'll tell you what we're doing today in just a second. All right, but before I go any further, I just had probably like the best shot of my life there as my first or second shot of the first hole. But let me show you real quick. I know it probably doesn't look like much, but there we are on that little hill. Okay, so basically here's the deal. I have been working a lot because we are a man down in my practice. And I've also taken up this little sport called golf. And the thing with golf is it takes up like four plus hours of your day when you're trying to play golf. So any extra free time that I would have had to do YouTube videos, I basically just stopped and played golf. Not because I hate doing YouTube videos, because I kind of want to enjoy my summer and enjoy my time here. So the only way to do that is to actually enjoy it. And how I enjoy it is by playing golf. So here's my tee shot of that first, or the second hole here. There's my ball. There's a the green. Getting better, this is a par four. Hopefully we'll be on in two and uh, have a look for birdie. But anyways, the whole point of doing this video is to basically merge my YouTube life with my other hobby life, which is now golf, and that takes a majority of my life. So that's what we're doing today. Stay tuned. And for those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Shalini. I'm a board certified diagnostic and interventional radiologist in New Jersey, and now an avid golfer. And so I somehow ruined that awesome setup with a uh, bogey. So par the first hole, bogey the second, onto a par three. But I will wait in the shade here for a minute because it is so hot, and I have to wait for the people in front of me to get off the green. So what's the point of this video, you ask? Well, today we're going to be talking about the five no's of my specialty. And you're probably like, what the hell is he talking about? But there's a viral video theme circulating around uh, Instagram and TikTok where doctors from each specialty say five things they wouldn't do in that specialty or five things, I don't know. I don't really know the whole point of it, honestly, but basically they just name five topics or five things they've learned throughout the years that they wouldn't do according to their field. So that's what we're gonna do today while I play around it off. Let me rephrase that because I just bodied that hole. So par, bodhi, bodhi. So what I was going to say is the top five things I would never do after working in my specialty. Let's go. All right, so the first thing I would never do after working in my specialty for over a year now and slash six years total, no wait, seven years total, I would not get a gastrostomy tube or a stomach tube unless I absolutely had to, as in, I had no other choice. And I know this may be controversial, but hear me out. Okay, ended up parring that hole because I had a disastrous drive, lost it, went out of bounds, and had to take a drop. So if I didn't drop, I would have birdied it. That's how well I played after it, but you know, what can you do? That's golf. That's why I love this sport. So I seem to have found myself in some tree jail here on my drive, but nonetheless, I know people are gonna come after me saying, yeah, but some people need it, some people need it. Maybe they have Crohn's or maybe they have short gut syndrome or maybe they need it for nutrition. Yes, 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 they need it. That's the key there. But if I didn't need it or needed it temporarily or for some other reason, I just wouldn't want it. And what I'm trying to say is I wouldn't want it unless I like absolutely had to have it because again, they're a nuisance, they leak, they're irritating. There's always an issue with them. You have to get them changed every six weeks or so for the rest of your life. So if I was maybe had a couple weeks left to live, I still probably wouldn't get one because yeah, they're terrible unless you need them. But you know, I don't know what else to say about that. Next, ooh, a ball almost hit me. The second thing I would not do as an interventional radiologist is I would not deliver a baby at a hospital that didn't have an interventional radiologist on call.
Yeah, I just played that hole so terribly. Ended up with a double bogey. Maybe it's because I was trying to uh, think of what I was gonna say next, I don't know. But nonetheless, what I was saying was, the reason I wouldn't deliver at a hospital without an interventional radiologist on call is because childbirth can have a number of consequences and complications related to bleeding. I can't tell you how many post-operative women I've taken to the IR suite after delivering or after C-section who have postpartum bleeding and they call us to control the bleeding. The reason I say IR is better to have at the hospital is because we can take a minimally invasive approach and embolize the uterus after delivery, which can stop the bleeding. The other alternative is if there is no interventional radiologist on call at that hospital, the other option is basically remove your uterus. So. What if you wanna have another kid in the future? Or maybe you just wanna keep your uterus. Those are all options if interventional radiology is in the house. Now, this isn't a very common thing, but the fact that I've personally done it many times on many different women postpartum makes me want my wife and myself to deliver at a hospital with an interventional radiologist on call. All right, so I've played a few more holes now. Finished up decent, 44 on the first nine, <laughs> on the front nine. Uh, that's good for me, you know, don't want to find my ball. And uh, talk a little more about why I want to deliver in a hospital without interventional radiology. So now I'm not saying it's a must, but I'm just saying if I'm going to deliver at a hospital, I want all options available to me. And especially if I could avoid a major surgery, if I had a complication from childbirth, I would want to do so. That just makes sense to me. But if I could handle bleeding in a minimally invasive approach versus a pretty decent operation, which is hysterectomy, I would choose to do so. And I'm sure a lot of people would if they knew that was a possibility. Now, before we get into the number three thing that I want to do, having worked in my field, I do want to take a minute and appreciate what all is going on here because I am currently on IR call. I'm also playing golf. And I'm also making a YouTube video at the same time. Now, if that is not maximum efficiency, I don't know what is. Okay, number three. The number three thing I would not do after working in my field is have any procedure done on uterine fibroids or my prostate for BPH or benign prostatic hyperplasia without consulting an interventional radiologist first. And the reason being is because again, Kind of touching back to number two there are a lot of minimally invasive approaches to treating fibroids and men with bph rather than going through with a surgical procedure first for instance if i was a female who had fibroids the options for them would be myomectomy or going out and surgically scooping out those fibroids or another option would be the most definitive treatment which again would be hysterectomy or removal of the uterus if that patient would have gone to an interventional radiologist first, they could undergo a uterine fibroid embolization, which has shown significant results in decreasing size of fibroids and also diminishing symptoms related to fibroids, such as bulk type symptoms like pelvic fullness, constipation, frequent urination, etc. On that same point, if I were an older gentleman who had an enlarged prostate, the options surgically are a TERP or transurethral resection of the prostate, which is where they go through your urethra and resects a part of your prostate that's kind of blocking off your urethra. If I had an option, I would not go that route first. I would go speak with an interventional radiologist because we can treat the prostate minimally invasively through something called prostatic artery embolization, which you have heard me talk about a ton on my channel. Again, we have had enormous success with this procedure. I don't know why you wouldn't try these procedures first, before you would go into a surgical option. I think many people don't try these procedures first because they aren't really aware that they exist and that's what I'm here for. So the question you have to ask yourself is, if you're going to have one of these procedures, do you want to go with the surgical option with a rigid stroke through your urethra or just a small incision in your wrist that you receive a Band-Aid afterwards and life is good? I don't know about you all, but I don't want a rigid scope going up my urethra unless I have to. So if it were up to me, I would probably try a minimally invasive approach where we just access the radial artery in your wrist or femoral artery in your groin, go up and over, embolize the uterus or prostate. And since we do have good success rates with this procedure, 
it'll most likely be successful if you are a good candidate for the procedure that is. Worst comes to worst, if it fails, at least you tried the minimally invasive part first rather than going straight to surgery or an invasive cystoscope that you'll be in the hospital for versus an outpatient procedure. It just, it just makes sense to me. The problem is a lot of people don't know about these procedures, which again, that's what I'm here for. On a side note, I just hit a bomb of a drive and uh, trying to do it on the Dorena 2 on this part five here. Wish me luck. Also side note, these two drives I'm playing with are so nice. All the pictures of me driving, they're the ones that are actually taking the photo, the videos of me on the tee box and stuff. They're super nice. All right, so a little update. I'm on hole 18 currently. Had a few uh, breakdowns, so I took a break from filming because uh, it was getting in the way, but my friend who I'm playing with is walking up somewhere over here. I don't know if you can see him. And uh, he's been awesome because he's been literally giving me lessons, just me and him, the last couple holes. He basically changed my golf game 100%. Now I'm just like hitting so much better. It's incredible how much a lesson can do. <laughs> Anyways, all right, we'll get to number four in just a second. I'll probably finish out this hole and get to number four. I don't know if you can see, but that is my ball right next to the pin there. Let me drive forward a little bit. Not half bad. We'll take it. Whew. Okay, it's legit like 105 right now. So uh, I'm going to cool off in my steaming hot car and then we'll get to number four and five when I get back home. Sound good? Oh, okay, good. Okay, so you may have noticed that things are a little different currently than they were on the golf course because today is the next day because I was too tired and got too into my round of golf yesterday to finish filming. But today is Sunday. We're going to the beach right now. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> We're going to the beach right now. Still on call. And yeah, let's get into the number four thing I would never do having worked in my field. Number four is I would never not go into radiology thinking that AI is going to replace us. And the reason I say that is because, I mean, you've probably seen a million of my videos at this point talking about why I would still go into radiology, even though AI is a concern. And my main thing or main focus with that is that AI just isn't going to replace radiologists anytime in the near future. I'm so sorry, I couldn't hold that in. <laughs> Oh my God. I knew that was coming. Okay. Anyways, um, where, where was I? So I've done a million videos on this and the reason is, is because AI just isn't what everybody thinks it is. There are so many different problems with AI and actually we've been using AI for quite some time now in radiology and it only ever helps us just a smidge, but it's not really close to being 100% accurate and we can't really utilize something that isn't even remotely near 100% accurate for a number of different reasons. Again, I've done a whole video on this topic up here, link up here, why AI is not replacing radiologists. Actually, I've done two videos on this topic. We'll link both of them up there if you want to go into a little further detail or want to know a little more about that topic. But AI is not replacing us anytime soon. We are still needed. We will forever be needed and Andrana would really want me to read her studies rather than a computer. Correct, Amundo. Correct. Whew. Okay, so I was gonna film on the beach, but it's exorbitantly hot out. So let me get some air conditioning on, hold on a second. So the fifth and final thing that I would not do as an interventional radiologist working in practice now for years <laughs> is go to the chiropractor and have neck manipulation. And if you follow me on Instagram, which if you don't, I mean, you should link up here. I've been posting a lot about chiropractors and especially the neck manipulation portion of chiropractors. I don't see any benefit from it, but there have been many cases reported of vertebral artery dissections from it. And basically a vertebral artery dissection is damage to one of the main four arteries that supply your brain. So you can imagine if you damage one of those arteries, it can cause a catastrophic injury to the brain, also known as a stroke. There has been cases of people getting paralyzed after going to the chiropractor. And the reason this is so fresh in my mind is because I just posted on Instagram about an event that happened in Georgia where a young female in her 20s went to the chiropractor 
had a neck manipulation and ended up paralyzed in a coma for like two weeks or so and still hasn't recovered. So there really is no benefit from going to the chiropractor, but there are risks involved. So I just wouldn't do it at all. And that's just one of a few stories I've seen throughout my training. I've read many CTAs of the neck to look for dissections after going to the chiropractor. And just to end this, I'll give you a little bonus one or bonus thing that I would never do as an interventional radiologist. And that is I would never, ever, ever smoke cigarettes or anything for that matter. And the reason being is because, you know, in my field, we treat a lot of progressive diseases. And a lot of times if you come to me as an inpatient, it's because you're probably not in too good of shape. And a lot of this stuff that we treat, like atherosclerotic disease, lower extremity occlusions, abdominal aortic aneurysms, cancers, all this kind of stuff that I treat in my line of work could be avoided potentially by just not ever smoking. So don't ever smoke. I do not understand how young people these days can start smoking cigarettes when we know what we know. Almost every single cancer and a lot of disease processes are caused directly by smoking. Anyways, that officially concludes this video. Let me know if you liked this kind of vlog style. I was trying to do both enjoying my life and also vlogging and maintaining my YouTube career. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this style of video. And I'll do more and also, you know, I'll do the occasional sit down videos as well. But uh, otherwise, leave a comment below if you have any questions and I'll get to it and I'll see you all on the next video. Bye. Oh. Oh, subscribe to my channel and uh, click the link in my description to get six free stocks from Weeble. All you have to do is deposit one cent, you get six free stocks. And so, I mean, if you don't like free money, then I think everybody likes free money, but just click the link in my description. Bye.